Kenneth Hagin Ministries and the Trinity Broadcasting Network present Faith That Lives. Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. King James translation reads, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Old Testament, of course, you know, was originally written in Hebrew. Hebrew said, Surely he hath borne our sickness and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Matthew 8, 17 says, the latter part of the 16th verse talks about the multitude that came to Jesus. He healed them all, it said, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. 1 Peter 2, 24 reads, who his own body uh, who his own self by our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. We've been talking about the most important things, actually seven most important things, that you are to know about divine healing. And uh, actually you must know this if you're going to get divine healing to work for you. If you don't know it, very seldom if ever will it work for you. You may temporarily be helped through somebody else's prayers or through spiritual gifts, but uh, if you're going to maintain your healing, you'll have to know what we're talking about. Now, first of all, <clears throat> the very first thing, and I'll go over them briefly. We'll not take a lot of time unless the Spirit of God would lead us to comment. But the first and foremost thing you need to know is that it is God's will to heal you uh, because healing, according to the scriptures we just read, is in the redemptive plan of God. Everybody knows that Jesus took our sins. But you see, everybody doesn't know that Matthew 8, 17 said, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Hallelujah. And so healing belongs to us. Now, the second most important thing that you ought to know about divine healing is <clears throat> you need to know the, where sickness comes from. That sickness comes from Satan. Satan is the author of sickness, not God. And... Uh, <clears throat> Remember that the Bible is progressive revelation. Amen. And uh, you don't get full revelation of everything in the Old Testament. It's just types and shadows of that which is to come. But thank God under the New Covenant we do get the full revelation under the New Testament. We read here where Peter said in Acts 10, 38, <clears throat> how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. In other words, Peter said all those people that Jesus healed, and there were multitudes of them, were oppressed of the devil. He says, in other words, that sickness is satanic oppression, or that Satan is the oppressor, but Jesus is the deliverer. Now, Jesus, commenting along this line, said in Luke 16, 18, about the woman that was healed, whose body was bowed together, and uh, he said in the 16th verse of the 13th chapter of Luke, And art not this woman, <clears throat> being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years. Now notice that it, this was a physical infirmity. Her body was bowed together, and yet he said Satan did it. He said Satan hath bound her, lo, these 18 years. Uh, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, The thief cometh not, but for to kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So then that which steals and kills and destroys is a thief, and the devil's the, the author. He's the thief he's talking about. But I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Then in 1 John 3:8. It said, he that committed, King James says committed, actually the New Testament is written in Greek. The Greek said, he that practices sin. You know, if you said, he that commits sins of the devil, that would take us all in. 
because we've all missed it. I mean, even since we've been Christians, we didn't intend to. You know, sometimes as I look back, I thought at the time I was doing pretty good. As I look back, I see how far I missed it. <laughs> Amen. Did you ever do that? You know, every step out of love really is sin, isn't it? He that practices sin, actually is what the Greek says, is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, when many people read that, that he might destroy the works of the devil, they automatically think of sin, and that's true. That is the works of the devil. But right on the other hand, sickness is the works of the devil. Because we read how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And so he came that he might destroy, or put to naught, another translation said, the works of the devil. Praise God. Then the third most important thing that you ought to know about sickness is that God, how God dealt with sickness in the Old Testament as well as the New. Because, you see, you learn something about the character of God. He never changes. I said he never changes. He's the same God now that he was then. There's not even a shadow of turning with him. Well, we'll not go into great detail about that, but we did in our study go into detail of studying what the Word of God said in that, that uh, in the Old Testament, he tells us that sickness is a curse. Well, if sickness was a curse, according to the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, sickness is a curse under the New Testament. You see, sin is the same under the New Testament as it was under the Old Testament. Amen. Isn't that right? And so a curse under the Old Testament would not become a blessing under the New Testament. Who could it? Not if we have a better covenant established on better promises. Isn't that, wouldn't that be strange? See, some people tell you today, you know, that God puts sickness on people, you know, to bless them. 